Hello everyone, in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to build this semi-automatic potion brewery, meaning you use redstone to make it easier for you to brew a large amount of potions. So first I'll show you how to build this large factory version, and then I'll explain to you the problems with it and show you the version I use instead. So how this works is, when one of these lights, one of these lamps, are turned on, that means all the hoppers next to that lamp are disabled. They're getting a redstone signal next to the lamps, which means they're getting powered and turned off and not working properly. So you see we turn off that top row and it drains water bottles into this row. And this first area creates your awkward potions, which are essential to brewing any potion. And so you basically this first row just puts nether wart into water bottles. That's all this first row is for. So as soon as that's done brewing, blah blah blah, there you go. So now you I'll show you that all the way down. These are all awkward potions from one end to the other. So then we turn off the top one, because we don't want any more water bottles draining in yet. And then we turn on the bottom one, because we don't want those bottom ones draining into the chest. And then we turn off the middle one. So when we turn off the middle one, they go down to this bottom row. And this bottom row is our final stop, besides the chest. That's where we put our ingredients in. So you load your ingredients in the same order that you want them to show up in your potions. So let me just think of what kind of potion I want to brew here. I've been playing creative so long, it's hard to remember where everything is. Let's do a potion of night vision, so we'll need a golden carrot. And let's also grab some glowstone to make it last longer. That's the glowstone. There we go. Oh wait, no, it's actually redstone that makes it last longer. Sorry, I've been doing creative too long. I haven't brewed in a while. Alright, so we put our golden carrot in and then our redstone in. So you see the golden carrots in there, and let's actually do that for every one of these. Three golden carrots and a bunch of redstone. I'll just separate it like this so I can easily put them into each three. So golden carrot first and redstone second. The order that you do it in is important. So I'll put those in each of those and I'll fast forward until it's done brewing. And now that it's done brewing, you see it, it applied both of the ingredients to that awkward potion. See, this one's still brewing. So, it, first it's the regular potion of night vision, and then it applies the redstone. So the order that you put them in the hopper is the order that those ingredients go into the brewing stand. And therefore, the same order that they go into your potions. And then the last step of using this whole thing is you turn off the bottom row of hoppers, and then your potions drain into this chest, and you're ready to start the whole process over again as soon as you reset these. So, there is some problems. The reason I don't use this myself is because it's actually too complicated, in my opinion. Sometimes it's better to have it simple. So I'll show you this complicated version, this whole big factory version, how to build it, and then I'll show you how to build the smaller version. So to start with the factory version, you just put a bunch of these chests right next to each other, and you do that by alternating between regular chests and trap chests. And then next, you'll put a hopper into the back of every chest, and you can place as many chests as you want. However many chests you have, that's how many brewing stands you have. If you put more than 15, then leave a gap between them, because you're going to need to put some repeaters. So just put a hopper into the back of every chest, and then a brewing stand on top of every hopper. So there we go, now we have that. And the next thing we have to do is connect a hopper to the back of every brewing stand. So just look for that little hitbox at the bottom of the brewing stand that can be a little difficult. Make sure your hoppers are facing the right way after you place them. And then put, again, a brewing stand on top of every hopper that you just placed. There we go, next step's done. And for the last time, put another row of hoppers into the back of every brewing stand. Except this time you're going to use two hoppers. So connect one hopper, and then connect another hopper to the back of that hopper. And you do that for every brewing stand right here. So here's a quick overview of what it should look like so far. So far you should have two brewing stands, and both of those should have hoppers under them, and hoppers running into the back of them. Next, we'll grab everything to disable the hoppers, you know, to do our redstone with. So first you'll need a redstone lamp, you'll need levers, redstone, repeaters, and some kind of block I'm using quartz. So put your uh, lights, or lamps, next to each row of hoppers, just like this, and then put a lever on, on the sides, not, um, it has to be on the side like how I placed them, otherwise one lever might uh, power two lamps. So just dig out a place like here, and we're going to be powering these blocks underneath the hoppers. So just put that right like that so it's a little closer. 
Actually, we'll do it like this so it's powered by the switch. Sorry for all my switching around here. Alright, so then just put a repeater facing into the block underneath every hopper, and then connect the redstone to that. So now when you flip this switch over here, all those blocks get powered and all those hoppers stop working, because when a hopper is powered, it doesn't work properly. So there you go. So leave that off for now, and then we'll do the same thing for every one. But you want to place your redstone in a way where it doesn't interfere with any other redstone. So the redstone from the middle switch shouldn't be powering the top switch or the bottom switch, etc. You get the idea. So we're going to have to set this up and make, test each one to make sure it's not interfering with any other lines of redstone. So for your second one, just use slabs like this. So for the second row, place a repeater coming out of your lamp and powering a block, like quartz. And then place repeaters facing into all your hoppers, so they'll power the hoppers. And then place redstone going into the back of the repeaters. So you see when we flip this switch, there you go, all those repeaters get powered, but it doesn't affect the bottom row. That's exactly how we want it to work. So for the last one, this one's finally actually simple, you just run a line of redstone straight across. That's actually all you have to do for the top one. So now we'll test all these and make sure none of them interfere with the other ones. There you go, perfect. You saw as soon as I light, lit up one row, only that row lit up and none of the other redstone. So the next thing we'll do is place our chests, which will hold our brewing equipment like water bottles, nether wart, etc. So there's two ways you can do that. You can place these double wide chests next to each other, or you can place these single wide chests. I recommend using the single wide chests, but really it's up to you. It shouldn't make any difference as long as the chests are full before you start. If the chests won't be full before you start, then use only the single wide chests. And for those of you who don't know or didn't hear earlier in the video, if you want to put chests next to each other, you just alternate between trap chests and regular chests. So next, put hoppers facing down, not into the side, but facing into the top of, the, of both rows of brewing stands. Now these hoppers will be used for different things, but you place them in exactly the same manner. So on this top row of downward facing hoppers, place your chests, you know, however you wanted to earlier. Like I said, I recommend doing the single one. But really, it's up to you. They work both work. And then on the second row down, don't place any chests. And the reason you don't place any chests is because this row is going to be for your ingredients, so you'll only ever need to put in three at most. I'll explain how that works again in a minute. So let's make sure all this redstone's still working, and then we'll test it out. So let's grab some water bottles to start our brewing with. We'll need our nether wart. And let's see, what kind of potion do I want to brew? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. We'll brew some potions of fire resistance. And then we'll make them extended fire resistance. So first, let's put in our... Turn off this one, because we don't want the water bottles to drain yet. And we'll put into this one all the way on the side, just so you guys can see it's working, since this part is the one farthest from the controls. Alright, and then we need to load this top one up with nether wart. And then we need to disable that. And then we turn off the row on the top because we want the water bottles to be able to flow down. But we don't want those water bottles to drain, so we have the row on the middle turned on. This is why I said it's a little confusing, but once you use it long enough, you get used to how it works. So then we can put our ingredients in in the same order that we want them to go into the potion. So we wanted to make an extended fire resistance potion. We put in magma cream first and redstone second because redstone is the modifier. So this, you see that's finished brewing our awkward potions. So next we turn off the water bottle row and we turn, we let this middle row drain. So that drains down to the bottom row. And there you go, see it starts brewing our potion for us. So that's pretty much the whole thing and now I'll show you how to build the small version. But first I want to explain just a little bit what happens when you mess up. And this is why I don't use this thing. So let's say you have, you accidentally do the wrong rows. This one gets water bottles instead of awkward potions. And when you have six, 10, you know, 15, 30 brewing stations, and you mess them all up with the flip of a single switch, it takes a lot of fixing, and it's pretty frustrating. So I tend to use the smaller version, and the way this is smaller is it breaks it up into two steps. First, you have your awkward potion brewing station, and then you have your actual potion brewing station. So we'll start with the awkward potion creation station. It's a great name, isn't it? So you'll need some kind of chest, you know, it doesn't matter if it's trapped or regular, you'll need a light, you'll need hoppers, a lever, and a torch. And you'll also, of course, need a brewing stand. So let's start by placing our chest here and have a hopper feeding into it from the side. Put the brewing stand on top, and then you'll want another hopper feeding into both the top and the side of this brewing stand. 
and we'll put chests on it since we'll have like a lot of water bottles or nether wart in here or whatever. So put one facing to the side, one facing to the bottom, and a chest on top of both. And next place a lamp next to each hopper, ex uh, except for the one on top. And this is just to let us know which hoppers are currently on and which are currently off. If the light is on, that means that hopper's off. Gets a little confusing, but like I said, once you do it for a while, you'll get used to it. So now let's test it out. Let's grab a bunch of water bottles, and let's grab some nether wart. So you load our water bottles in the side, and you load your nether wart in the top. So we press this, and you see it drains the water bottles down here, but they don't drain into the chest. And you put your nether wart in, and I'll fast forward through this right here. And then once it's finished brewing, you have your three awkward potions. Then you flip this switch, and it automatically turns one on and the other one off. So it it's, controls both by one switch rather than having a one switch for every level like the factory version. And a single thing of a single water bottle got through, but for the most part it worked. It mostly only let our awkward potions through. And you could of course just take out the water bottle and reload it in the side. So you grab that one right there and you just put it back. Most of the time that won't even happen. I'm surprised that happened at all. So there you go. There's your awkward potion creation station. Very simple and much smaller than the factory version. So the next thing we'll have to do is build a place to brew our final potions, our finished product. And you guys can do this however you like. I personally always put them on top of a table. And the reason I do that is because if you build a table, you can build a reservoir of water below, and then use that water to fill up your uh, water bottles to start your brewing process. But, you know, maybe you like putting yours on top of beacons or whatever. You can do that. The important part is, after you put all your brewing stands down, however many you want, and this is the water reservoir, like I said. But after you put your brewing stands down, you need to put hoppers facing into the top of them. That's all. That's all I do, personally. I don't use this whole fa fancy factory farm version. You just put a hopper facing downward into every potion stand, and then you use these like the ingredient hoppers in the factory version. So, you know, you put three ingredients in in the same order you want them to go into the potion. Now, that's pretty much this whole tutorial. So this little broken up version is probably best for personal brewing, and maybe the factory farm version is better if you have like a, you know, a brewing store on a server, something like that. Um, please leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed, and subscribe for new tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday, and mini build Mondays on Mondays. Thank you for watching, and good luck in all your brewing.